So I've been watching a lot of videos regarding Halo's construction line, notably with Simon from The Domain and Brickman117. With the rise of Halo Infinite comes new sets that already seem to be getting a far better release than sets before. Yeah, the past few waves have not taken kindly to local stores. So many waves of mystery bags and heroes completely shafted while Pokemon get shoved in my face in the aisle. But we did get a few things going and with the resurgence, it's got me in the mood to review some of the sets. I have a lot of the older stuff, so we might dig into those. I'm still heavily focused on my Team Fan Page 101 channel, but I am trying to make time for other projects. With that out of the way, let's take a look at 2019's Halo Mega Constructs 10th Anniversary Warthog Run. Ah, the Warthog, such an iconic statement of the Halo series in general. Basically, Bumblebee for Halo fans. Easily recognized with its fast and yet properly ethical design, equipped with anything of practical use on the bed, customizable to any mission, and there's a Puma joke here. This is the 10th anniversary of the very first Warthog release from the former Mega Bloks, so there's going to be a ton of resemblances and updates regarding construction, color, and specialized parts. But not only that, with the figures, it also honors the history of the Warthogs in between. The use of Master Chief and the Arbiter is a nod to the exclusive CE Warthog in black and gold, which also inspired the Halo 5 Attack Goshog. The hunters in the set seem heavily based on EDA's Last Stand, with two matching figures in similar colors. That set also featured a beat-up Warthog. There's a lot to get through, but before all this, the set comes with a few bonus parts Mega Constructs threw in. The set comes with their version of a part separator, with a pin and axle on the sides to push them out. Although, with axles, you're gonna need a bit more than this. I'll give it credit, taking off the parts and pushing them out from the slider is oddly satisfying. And for parts to work with everyday objects, it comes with a paper clip. Not sure who uses paper clips anymore, but who complains about freebies? The set includes 410 base plates for each figure, an assault rifle, carbine, carbine, carburetor, and special to these anniversary sets, a golden weapon, that being the flamethrower. Specially designed and personalized for those who want to burn grunts and look fat boo doing so. Just $39.99 Canadian and we'll also throw in the rest of the set. Flame piece not included. Master Chief is molded as the typical Mark VI Halo Spartan design based on Halo 2 or 3. With the articulation you'd expect from these humanoid modern day figures. His suit underneath is black and the armor is a nice shiny metallic green that almost hints gold in certain lighting. Pfizer could certainly use a black trim to trace around the gold, but otherwise I'm mesmerized by the nice shiny armor. For a while since the new articulation was introduced, I felt they didn't get the colors right. I mean, the white figures just look like they had specks of dirt. Now, I think they got a handle on it. I noticed the shoulders are loose, but that's likely only the case on mine. Perfect with the assault rifle, but usually I keep it on the back because how can I say no to the flamethrower? It's dipped in 24 karat gold! Anyone remember when we hardly had any Master Chiefs? Now look how many we got. What's this? A grunt family having a wholesome picnic? My suitcase full of chiefs will put a stop to this. This early version of the Arbiter has the typical elite design pattern with the gray underneath the armor, skin color for the head, and what is this? Champagne gold for the armor? But isn't it silver? No, it's gold! Silver! Gold! Silver! Gold! If it's a problem, get the silver one. Otherwise, I don't care. Typical elite style articulation with the triple leg motion to take advantage of height over some of the other figures, but still be accepted to work along older sets. Some of the parts are reused from the bungee model, but the helmet is incredibly well done. The one shoulder armor does get in the way with the chest. I see no line work or major paint apps, but with the shiny gold color, I'm not complaining. Plus, he really works against the Master Chief figure. Let's get that back-to-back -back action shot. Oh, yeah! The set also includes two hunters, both in blue armor and using the newly articulated redesign introduced in the Wasp set. This is the first time I've gotten my hands on it, and while it sure does step up from its predecessor, it's hell to build. The ball joints needed to be attached and were supremely tight. I thought I was going to break it. Once it's done, it's incredibly intimidating, standing tall against the majority of your other figures. They really got the shape down. I mean, if we bring out the old figure, 
What were the arms? Keeps the tail parts on the back, and the shields have a touch of silver. My critiques, however, include the ball-jointed head that doesn't lift up, only rotates, and the knees that only bend so far, but hey, ball-joint V. I like the torso with the Spartan-style armor chest that opens to expose the gross worms of James Gunn's film. So, here's the last figure in the set, it's a matching hunter. In fact, my compadre, I don't think you realized I didn't even swap it yet! That's right! I lied to you! Now for the crowning jewel of the set. What an evolution from the very first Warthog. Even throughout the years, you can see how far we've come. So many prominent specialized parts to bring home that Warthog energy. Either since the beginning, introduced later, or replacing even the original parts. Glad the turret's not in the box anymore. Those armor plates on the backside, the turret, ammo belt, seats, hooks, and even the windscreen separate from the frame are all present in the evolution. Colors seem inspired by the original model, but we got the sexy pearl green and no stickers, which is an automatic 10 additional points. Even the wheels have been adapted with rims that plug right inside with a small piece as an adapter. Console is appropriately detailed to say the least. And check this out, the bumper isn't falling off at the touch of a Q-tip. Silver scratches exposing the metal, the nougat colored seats and gold ammo belt are a nice subtle addition to the vehicle. They certainly captured that very recognized shape of the car. And it sure is fun to drive around. Figures fit in the seat and one can man the turret. But what about the weapons? You can clip them on the side to keep them for storage. The golden piece can ride shotgun. But does it roll? Where we're going, we don't need safety precautions. Whee! Now I do have a few complaints other than the fact I can't fit a wraith in. I don't care for the suspension. It's just a soft rubber tube running through to both sides of the beams. There's hardly any bounce to it. There's no point in even having it. Maybe if you're slow, it slightly props it up, but it's not worth the effort. Funny, for that to be my biggest downgrade I consider for that set, it's a pretty fantastic model. Bring in the Chief, blast that Halo music, and is it 2007? Compared to my dirty old Warthog, and while it was fun for the time, there's a certain breath of life being brought into the set. Plus, the figure choice is wonderful. Two hunters, I mean, they did right with that itself. I guess the only reason why I'd see you'd skip this is if you got the Warthog Rally. I can't say it's an upgrade to this, except for the suspension. They look so similar that tracking this down might not be worth the effort. But then again, two hunters, and that's my argument. I don't blame them for releasing two Warthogs in similar colors back to back, considering one's an anniversary set and one's promoting a new game. It is a testament of the Warthog itself. It may see some changes over the years, but it will always be the Warthog, and I think this is one of the best Warthogs we've gotten. Wonderful figures, amazing build, great set, and arguably a good value. I'd say check it out, especially if you've got a Grunt Bowling Alley set. Let me ask you something, do you guys like the Covenant? Well get ready for its edgy son who ran away from home, but as an evil alien group. The primary villains in Halo Wars 2, the Banished featured most of the known species from the Covenant. With it comes a good enough reason for Mega Constructs to go back to the vehicles and rebrand them for the use of the Banished. This includes turrets, a Banshee, and of course, the Covenant Ghost. And yet, where's my Banished Wraith? One of the smaller built vehicle box sets, this is 2017's Banished Ghost Rush. If you're looking for a cheap set to expand your banished army with some recognition and try to get this new brute mold, this is the set for you, especially if you found it for $5 clearance. It may not be a ton of stuff, but this is a perfect army building pack or banished starter kit. It's not just a recolor, the build itself changes from the other ghost sets. This vehicle may not be the most powerful, but you can't tell me you wouldn't have a blast driving it. Would I consider it an upgrade? I guess we'll find out. The set comes with a small tan base and the updated brute shot. I like the original weapon, but man, does it look like the awkward years. This is why you leave them out for a while. Let it ripen, let it mature. It seems bigger, it's certainly more aggressive and has seen action with the damaged chipped out blade. Multiple attachment ports angled off with two handles and a peg connection on the bottom. The Chad Brute looks so intimidating! Look at this thing! It's big, hefty, with solid armor, jagged spikes, and the helmet of the Juggernaut! That's it. I know this is a banished brute, but I'm calling this DOOM BRUTE! 
Underneath, you'll see the typical brute mold in dark gray with the modern articulation. Even the head sculpt is the same to no surprise. Don't be sad, we can't all be Craig. To go with the terror, his armor is a dark silver and crimson. Just subtle hints to let you know he's probably gonna rip your arm off. Yeah, I, I don't think that's tomato paste. Is that not enough? Bring out the brute shot, which with the blade and gun, it's essentially giving him more options to kill. And if he needs a break, the set, oddly enough, includes a spare clip you can add to the back and store the weapon. Either this is a happy accident, or Mega was being sneaky. The Ghost has seen a good amount of redesigns, of course, being that it was one of the first sets ever. Funny enough, for the first Halo Wars game. I've seen some ups and downs from the evolution of the Ghost, and while this looks pretty good from afar, a closer inspection says otherwise. I admire the colors, the crimson common in banished vehicles with light metallic silver pieces that include include the weapons up front, and hints of transparent blue accenting what I'd imagine to be energy. There's also paintwork on certain parts. Can I get a hooray for no stickers? I like how the front of the wings are built, licking in some of that trans blue. The dark colors and swift design gives it a very haunting presence, and Oh, now I get it. There's only a thin stem connecting the back, but that leaves a lot of room to throw in the figure. If only the bar on mine wasn't warped and could keep the handle in. Couple other positives include these cut tiles. I like how the round pieces aren't level, keeping the front higher, and the top that's hinged to give it that swooping curved look. It's fun to swoosh around on the ground, that is until something's out of place. Yep, now for the complaints. The top cover is connected by a hinge and can swing open if you're rough. Then again, it's made out of blocks. It's all gonna fall off if you're rough. The wings and tiles are only connected with two studs each. I've just grabbed the thing and the wings fall off. Even more frustrating with the tiles because you don't even notice when it's barely attached. Structure issues are disappointing, especially if the corners of the blocks inside hook the center hinge when you try to rest it down. I've had them tag and snap off so many times. If you're careful and don't fling cans on it, you should be good. I oh, not again. I guess other than that, I feel they could fill in the gaps, but otherwise, it looks good and dangerous. And why am I complaining anyways about the structure? You want a warthog to break it up? Well, do we have the toy for you? Just keep those things in mind. You'll notice you might slip up more often than expected. Everything goes back together super easily, but I can't help but feel some of this could have been avoided. With the crimson color, awesome figure, and even the weapon, I feel the original value was certainly good for a vehicle that menacing. It's savage and a great addition to your banished collection army. I wonder if this opens to store decapitated heads or golf clubs. Anyone remember how big it was to get ODSTs and Mega Blocks before we had a handful of molds in UNSE ranks? I remember calling the pilots ODSTs in denial. When we actually got them, ODSTs not only broke the streak, but at the time, no ODST was the same in different sets. It wasn't even hard to get them. They started as a Toys R Us exclusive line, but if you could get there, the cheapest way to snag the molds was through the drop pods. How nostalgic were these? I even recall being the first one to find the Arctic Sniper. Later on with the new articulation, new armor, and gear given to the ODSTs, drop pods returned with a new gimmick. In this, we're gonna take a look at an example. This is 2018's Operation Veritas Drop Pod. That was not intentional. In the package, it looked pre-built for the most part, but it was a prank. Almost the entire thing had to be constructed from the ground up. No big deal, it's not complicated, that is, unless the bottom base keeps slipping out. Operation Veritas was the third using the new construction system, featuring a uniquely painted drop pod and specialized ODST in matching blue and orange. Compared to the original, it seems more rounded off. Gee, do I miss the side doors? How am I supposed to fit my fingers in there? The set comes with the black base plate and the modern redesign for the classic assault rifle, featuring a 
To fit the color theme, there's a good amount of orange that draws my attention. Looks more appropriate than the pizza one. The mold for the ODST seems pretty basic in the new articulation style for the majority until you notice the piece connected to the helmet. Doesn't fold down or detach, which would be cool for an update. Until then, it's like someone glued it to his forehead. But he doesn't need all those updates and equipment to stand out. Black undersuit, silver armor, and the blue visor seems pretty standard, but in addition, his armor includes a metallic coat color and orange paint surrounding the symbol in his chest. The pod itself also features similar colors, mostly dark gray with silver, cobalt, and orange touches. The window is transparent and the bottom features orange and yellow to imply the set is already burning upon entry. Just like the drop pods before, the entire air brake system spins freely, but with the unsteady motion, it's a wobbly brief spin. You can't retract the whole thing without replacing the post. Line the blue section across, pull it down, peg it in, and fold down the flaps. Not the most subtle, but at least you don't need a shorter cheater peg. I like the design on these very specialized parts. There's more construction than you would expect. And yet, even with prices going up, they managed to price this in line with the old sets. Just keep an eye for the struts, they can slip out. No backpack? Just take these off, plug them on the back, and I'm fine with that. There's also another gimmick. You can intentionally smash this without worrying about breaking the clear plastic. The base is molded with a tab that pushes out the front door, so when you slam it hard enough, the door comes flying off. Who needs a stress ball? Only thing to note, if you don't hit it hard enough, it'll just shift forward. Once that happens, it's already out of the way, so you'll have to manually remove it or push it back. Inside you'll see a seat molded like the old style, and multiple holes to attach weapons that, with the arms in the way, is completely useless. I did find you can add the rifle to the door instead, and it should work, or just throw everything in without plugging it. The figure plugs into a peg, and if it goes far enough, it's hard to pull out. Thankfully, they seem to be on the same page. You can split the entire pod to get a good grip of the figure. My advice, just lightly plug the figure in. You can plug stuff on the back or on the bottom, which you might need to do because the base is rounded off. One little tap of a warthog will take it down. If you do add a base and don't want the door to pop off, either remove it for the sake of plugging it in, or hold the door as you attach a base. I like the colors on this. It's probably one of my favorites of the new build. It's bright, vibrant, but because it's an accent color, it doesn't overtake the set or make it too flashy. The ODST is a pretty good recolor too. He doesn't need that much equipment to stand out. The cobalt and orange complement the mold pretty well. I'd say get it if you can find it. Halo fans cringe. Let me ask you something, am I the only one who thinks the UNSE Hornet doesn't get enough attention? What is this, the fourth release of the vehicle? Sure, the first gave it a rough start, but the second and third are really good. Even with the lights and sound system, there's something about this aerial assault or transport vehicle that's functional yet intimidating. And then they decide to wire it down for some reason. The fourth incarnation of the Hornet, this is 2019's UNSC Hornet Blitz. Is it just me, or was this intended to be another anniversary set they decided to release early? We got recreations of all the original large sets already, and this seems to mix well. Sure, it's green, not gray, but look at the Scorpion. I have a few issues with the changeup, and I don't really think of it as an upgrade, more just a change in a different direction, but would that be a bad thing? We'll see. The set comes with two bases colored in green mixed with milk and charcoal, a pistol in black, and this large golden 343 era fuel rod gun. Seems like the golden weapon before they were cool. I think the grunt needs it if he's taking on the Hornet. The pilot is definitely making me think this is a 10th anniversary set in disguise. He may not have been in the original Hornet set, but the pilot was first released in green. Let me just say, in the new articulation, it's a wonderful update. Black and cream for the undersuit, a black belt, vibrant metallic blue and matte black on the helmet, and of course, how can I express my admiration for the metallic green color on the armor pieces? Oh, that helmet looks 
good. Reminds me of the days when we called this an ODST because we wanted to. Don't tell him, but in that color, I'm thinking of stealing his boots. Remember when we got three grunts in the original Hornet? Well, apparently they were small enough that they clumped them all together to create the ultimate grunt. This is the third design for their articulation, and designed based on the more classic form. Still funny little guys, now with articulation pushing the limits. Proper shoulders, ball joint head, waist rotation, ball joint hips, and even foot rotation. No elbows though. He has dark red armor that opens to reveal a muddy colored nude grunt. I still can't take them seriously. Add the fuel rod gun and- uh, Okay, I, I get it, just take my wallet. The Hornet is featured in that nice shiny green color, though I think I prefer it in dark metal before. The light gray is pretty dull, and the build of the body seems pretty uninteresting. Yes, I've compared it enough to the older models. And the size, while not too far off, comes off as disappointing. However, now that I've had it for a while, it's actually got its advantages. This won't be for everyone, but I like that we got something like this. It's like a love child between the Hornet and the Oni VTOL. It also feels personalized and lighter, probably because it doesn't have a sound box, but because it's so light, it's inviting to pick up, fly around, or prop it on a flight stand. The build is serviceable. There's a few tricks here, but with the body that's mostly simple stacked bricks and plates, it just comes off as a tad boring. I do like how they did the flaps in this size, plus no complaints about the console and printed parts. Turbines can rotate around, you can put in the pilot, but you can also add figures to the sides. There's even bars for the figures to hold. And there's bolt launchers that are only four studs long and super easy to fire. Take that competing brick-based brands! Honestly, I'm really digging this. Sure, it may not be for everyone. I don't get the raw power that I felt with the previous set. But as a tactical, practical Hornet, this does its job. If we're getting this, there are a few things I wish would change. The cockpit should have had the frame. It just feels so empty. Maybe it's because of the size. Maybe they didn't want to paint it over a clear piece, especially one in trans blue. But it just takes out the signature. Another issue is the struts at the bottom that can detach easily if you're not careful. Don't look at these bars for support, they're an illusion. Otherwise, if that's not enough to get you going, there's a few flare pieces underneath the turbines, a minigun attached to the fronts, and extra bolts underneath because some kid's gonna lose them. If this doesn't catch your interest, I don't blame you. There's a presence to the original that's simply not met, but for what it's trying to be, a simpler, smaller model, I think they did decently. Not perfect doesn't keep some of the interesting shapes, but it is something that I'm glad to have in my collection. Look into it if you want, but it's nothing to kick yourself over if you miss. I mean, if the handsome pilot isn't worth getting, I don't know what is. Hey, what's up? I'm the Told the Doom here doing another video, and today we're going to do something a little different. This is the Halo Mega Constructs Infinite Master Chief vs. Brute Warrior. So I figured that because it's a simple pack, we might as well do an opening and review at the same time. This one comes with Master Chief, a Brute Warrior, as well as a bunch of accessories and two base plates. And on the back of the back, Jing, they decide to go all Hot Wheels with it. So you get the cardboardy black and white outline. That's... Okay, let's go ahead and open it, shall we? Oh, there's a little tab to allow you to open it. That's fun. Ah, well, I just ruined the art. Give me my toy. Ah! <coughs> Only on this channel do we have flying brute hammers. There we go. Oh, it's raining toys. Hallelujah, it's raining toys. My God, the war. War never changes. We got a little plastic bag with a bunch of smaller parts. And let's just dump that on top of everything because, you know, we don't have enough stuff spilling out. So before we take a look at the figures, we're going to take a look at every accessory that comes with the pack. The first accessory you get is the brand new style assault rifle that's painted with dark gray and silver accents as well. It's molded in that lighter gray color. It does have an attachment port on the front as well as a slider on the top. It does have the slider piece 
which goes on top, and it's super small to where I just feel like there's almost no point in doing that accessory gimmick, but it's there if you want it. As well, it comes with two frag grenades, the brand new style of pistol, which is molded in gray plastic with a gunmetal color painted over it. And for Master Chief, we also have the energy sword, which seems to be really messed up in the molding. A lot of that blue color just seeped through and you've got bits of plastic hanging off the side. Yeah, this was not molded too well, but uh, I mean, it's an energy sword that's very sporadic. Am I going to complain about that? No. So what does the Brute Warrior get? This is listed as a pistol, but I don't think it's your average pistol. The centerpiece does rotate, and it looks pretty good. Kind of reminds me of the Mauler. I thought that the plastic was bent at the bottom, but no, there's some silver streaks there, so that's nice. You also get two rubbery spike grenades, which don't feel so bad. You get what I like to call the Brute Shot 2.0, or the Brute Shotgun, with some gray paint applications, and it's molded in a darker color. And I think this is my favorite weapon of the pack. You get a gravity hammer. The cool thing about this is it's got some silver paint applications, as well as a wash on on the front there. With both figures, you also get a plaque with Master Chief and Brute Warrior. And we're gonna start off the set with the Master Chief himself, and wow, that is a very nice looking figure. You get a silver paint wash all over it, which doesn't look complete. You get certain areas that uh, feel a little empty, especially when you look between the legs. You can tell that they put all the armor pieces on first and then went with the wash, but it's better than nothing because we've got so many Master Chiefs coming out. Put them up on screen. Yeah, that's a lot. So I'd much prefer in this pack, especially if you're getting the Brute Warrior and you're paying for another Master Chief, to get something else out of it. And I think the Silver Wash really does help. You get the 117 at the top there, and a lot of the parts are very similar to what we've gotten from previous Spartans, but the combination to make this Halo Infinite version of Master Chief is very nice. I like the simplified helmet going back to his original roots, and I think that the paint applications is really well done. You also get some accents of this darker color, and I love how the helmet has some silver dots on the side to highlight the lights. That's kind of burnt goldish orangish color for the visor, and uh, I think this is a very nice design for Master Chief. Now, just wondering why he chose an energy sword that's old. You also get the Brute Warrior, which uh, is probably the highlight because, of course, this is Craig, the one and only. He is very different compared to the Brute Warrior that you get from the Halo Heroes lineup, and I gotta say, this is a pretty nice design. I like the helmet, I like the crimson color added in. Of course, this is a banished Brute, so, you know, that's a main color for them. And uh, what I really like is that the painted red is not too far off from the molded plastic color. I thought that when I saw the original images that there would be a major difference, but it doesn't look too bad. I also like the gunmetal kind of steel color for the armor, and uh, the lighter gray color isn't too bad. I guess it highlights some of the points for the brute itself. I also like the skirt piece and how it's a rubbery piece so you can still move around the legs. Very cool. However, now looking at it, I can see why people would get this, especially considering that this is probably the cheapest version to get the Halo Infinite Master Chief thus far. I mean, if you're getting the Pelican just for the Master Chief, well, that's kind of a waste. Of course, you get a pelican with it, so what the hell am I talking about? I like this pack a lot. I like it a lot more than I thought it would, and uh, the extra accessories really go well, especially if you're hunting for a certain accessory or you want to try them out. This pack is probably the perfect way to go. And I gotta say that Master Chief really does look good. I, I gotta applaud them for the Halo Infinite design. The Brute's amazing, uh, the weapon choice is good, and I think that this is a pretty good value. So with that, I will see you guys next time.